And because I don't have space, I have to record and send. So, friends and families, I, time is very essential to me. And here I am in lockdown. Today is the last day in Ontario, Canada with my mom, and then I'll be leaving shortly. But the few hours I have, I just can't waste it. I have done my chores for her and for the home. But I want to send this message, and then there's a problem or issue with Facebook. So I will just try to voice, and you enjoy. So here's my blessing to you. And Patterson is becoming a very famous boy. Much more to come, I know. So listen to these words, my friends. Cautiously, carefully, listen to these words that I will read from the newspapers and that I will give you a certain um, advisories and points and directives guidances from my face, from my words, from my mouth and my heart for a better Guyana, for a better you and a better me. Guyana truly was being massacred by the EFC and elements in the APNU or the PNC. As I've said, the PNC is not my enemy. The PNC has always been my friend since Desmond Hoyt. But when they, knew, when they took power in 2015, well, one minister, particularly the Honorable Amna Ali, was being fair and just to me. Others, including the minister of the presidency, uh, Mr. Harmon, was on a campaign in three months to destroy my business. He almost did. Controlling the PPC, the Public Procurement Commission, so that they can even bring the matter up to the fore, to the light. And the chairman of the PPC, Mrs. Corbyn, someone who I respected and loved, betrayed me and therefore betrayed Guyana. And my heart bled. And they, if they think that I, once I forgive them and it didn't go public, that I would ever forget. Yes, I do forgive, but I don't forget. So what for me, this is not a vengeance. It is what I told them would happen. It is called divine retribution. So retribution from the universe to them. So there we have Mr. Patterson. The power. It is said he's one of the wealthiest men. Like a certain top leader of the opposition. So stay tuned, friends and families, for your brother, your friend, me, Haji, Dr. Ocean Khan, for ideas and thoughts on the wisdom of uh, truth in politics, philosophy and wisdom. I am not political, but I'm a, I'm a commentator. And this is In The Raw. Welcome to In The Raw, RK's Guy in the Free Media. And I am your host, your friend, Haji Dr. Ocean Khan. Dearest, beloved divine friends and families, I already explained to you as to some difficulties that I'm facing here. And so I am going to read it to you with some of the intros, hopefully, that will be edited in to this uh, message. Very important, very topical. Um, January 23rd, uh, um, David Patterson, former Minister of Public Infrastructure um, and the General Secretary of the Alliance for Change, uh, his photograph in the Chronicle of the 23rd, and the topic is questioned by Soku, Special Organized Crime Unit accused of attempting to defraud the Demerara Harbor Bridge of over $100 million. General Secretary of the Alliance for Change and the former Minister of Public Infrastructure, David Patterson, along with the former general manager of the Demerara Harbor Bridge Corporation, Ralston Adams, on Friday appeared before the Special Organized Crime Unit 
for questioning. The duo was hauled in for questioning in relation to their involvement in the procurement of consultancy services for the feasibility study and design of the new Demerara Harbour Bridge, specifically in relation to money used from the Demerara Harbour Bridge Corporation asphalt plant accounts to fund the study. And so, in November 2020, during the installation of the Board of Directors for the DHBC, Minister of Public Works, Wanajil, had revealed that there was an active police investigation into the, imp into the spending and actions of individuals in the awarding of the contract. Now, a commentary on Ms. Minister Wanajil. This man is an agent and uh, an officer from the Kingdom of God. He does everything in the way of the Lord, as commanded and guided by God for righteousness. And so he also was appointed as the junior minister in the minister, Ministry of Finance. And with the talent and the ability he had in his connection with people, he did a marvelous job. Then now putting him into something like the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, he has developed that excessive, extraordinary, fantastic talent for auditing. And besides that, his just natural skills to attract information and wisdom, maybe even from people within the Demerara Harbour Bridge themselves. This is my friend, my brother, one Edgil, as I would tell you, friend or true the religion and religions of God. Back to the article. While in opposition, the People's Progressive Party, Civic PPPC, had called for a probe into the matter after a contract in the sum of 148 million was sold, sold to a Dutch company. Livense CSO Engineering Contracting BV, subsequently submitted an unsolicited proposal to, con to conduct the study. You know, when this was happening, ladies and gentlemen, I warned them um, on my Arches Ghana Free Media and also before that, uh, that this will come to serious repercussion because they're doing some wrong things which they had accused the previous PPPC government who lost in 2015 due to a, um, a one vote. I think it was in Region 8 and they didn't want to do a recount. They managed to get an extra seat and the and the APNU AFC throughout um, managed to get the PPPC out of power. But the fact remains that um, I warned them and if they didn't know that there's something called tit for tat, what you put in the universe and what you try to harass and what you try to disturb and destroy others, that divine interference, divine retribution will be the reality. Back to the article. In 2015, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure invited companies to submit expressions of interest to the Chairman of the National Procurement and Tender Administration Board to undertake a feasibility study for the development of options for the Dharmara Harbour Bridge. Some 23 foreign and local companies submitted EOIs, expression of interest, by the December 2015 deadline, from which 12 were shortlisted. However, only two of the companies submitted proposals by the March 2016 deadline. And after negotiations with one of the companies, the MPI, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, now truly and properly named the Ministry of Public Works, informed the MPTAB of their decision to annul the tender with the intention of retendering at a later stage. However, the contract was never retendered. And there goes the crux of the problem of the attempt of uh, corruption and thievery. And we know those ministers and those power boys, a big, 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 big one, someone who is assumed to be, it is said, like the status of a warlord, even though they have to have several warlords. Um, mm -hmm. And so, this is what transpired, my beloved divine friends and family. Patterson, by memorandum dated November 18, 2016, made a request to the then Granger Cabinet uh, for consideration and approval to use funds from Demerara Harbour Bridge Corporation Oswald Plant to fund the feasibility study and commence contractual management engagement. Uh, I beg your pardon, remember this is in the raw, so a mistake is allowed and correction. With Levinson NC CSO, as of the 1st of January 2017, which is a total act contrary to the laws of Guyana and the World Bank and uh, the United Nations and the world. Once again, 
the apt new AFC is on skullduggery and mastivory, and those supporters who are maniacally applauding and loving uh, blindly need to understand the truth of what is taking place. This request to cabinet was not forwarded through an M through the MPTAB, but submitted directly by Patterson. And on November 25th, 2016, cabinet approved a total sum of 161,000. $514,420 to be used from the Demerara Harbor Bridge asphalt plant. Ladies and gentlemen, this shows it is not partisan alone. And like what they did to several members of the cabinet of the PPPC, this Soku, this new powerful democratic and fair Soku, need to hold most of the former cabinet before the courts. The minister of the former presidency need to be held before the court, my friends and families, including all the others. I know President David Arthur Granger can't do the fact, but it shows that they were in cabinet and they approved it, knowing that it was contrary to law and there was big money involved, obviously for electioneering and pocketing and for fancy living of the boys. So friends and families, um, former general manager of the Demerara Harbor Bridge Corporation and project manager, for the consultancy, Rolston Adams on December 9, 2016, signed a contract with Levensco CSO Engineering Contracting BV. Adams had informed the PPPC during investigations into that matter that the board of DHBC was not a party to the decision to use the funds for the stipulated purposes and he did not sign the contract on his behalf on behalf of the DHBC, but only because he was requested by Patterson to do so. It is obvious with all the gold bangles and all the gold things in hand that there were other uh, assumed skullduggeries in place involving many people. Knowing that the gold bangle was wrong and he allowed it, then therefore it is fair for an investigating team to say that he was involved in this skullduggery and uh, Patterson smartly allowed him to sign on behalf of Patterson, but by instructions. When um, Mr. Welch, who is going to go to court very soon, and who we're going to invite the, 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 minister, the former minister of the presidency also to court, to answer for terminating my contract before I could start, um, the secretary of, uh, the, of the treasury, a wonderful, brilliant gentleman, I can't recall his name, a doctor, so, 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 who gave up and dropped everything and left the country after he realized the corruption and the deceit. He asked Welsh in my presence, did you ask for a letter of authority to terminate the contract of RK security? And Mr. Ocean can. And from the conversation and the lips I was reading, the answer was, no, he did not ask, but he received instruction from the Ministry of the Presidency. That minister, will, former minister, will also have to end up in the court on my matter. The DHBC, a public corporation managed by a board of directors, was established by the Demerara Harbour Bridge Corporation in 2003 in accordance with Section 5 of the Act. The general manager shall, subject to the general direction and control of the board, be solely responsible for implementing the decisions of the board and efficient discharge of the functions of the corporation. The BBBC in its report noted the DHBC does not fall within the definition of a procuring entity as provided in the Procurement Act, except for projects funded by funds provided from the consolidated fund of the government. The DHPC can conduct its procurement in accordance with its own rules and procurement once they do not conflict, I repeat, once they do not conflict with the Procurement Act. If they are given, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, monies to the consolidated fund or authority, they cannot exceed the Procurement Act. But here it was, Patterson. I see Patterson going to jail for quite a number of years, ladies and gentlemen. As advised by the general manager, DHBC, this corporation, however, in practice, executes procurement in accordance with the provisions of the Procurement Act. Mr. Adams, listen carefully, confirmed to the PPC that this project was not included in the work program and budget of the DHBC for the financial year in which the consultant was contracted, the report for the stated. So there is the, the trick. He's now talking out in being interviewed by the Pro Public Pro Procurement Corporation, ladies and gentlemen, that this was not 
a part of the work plan of the DHBC. And they did not have a budget for this. So the main skull dogger and the mastermind had to be have senior members of the cabinet and the Patterson. The PPPC investigation into the matter concluded that the fact that the DHBC was described as the client in the contract, the project was to be regarded as one of the DHBCs. He was taught that, right? Because he signed that contract. He signed it. Now we're coming to a clear breach. Article dealing with Patterson and Mars Tivory, obviously by members of the former cabinet. And uh, it will appear from the article, him. And so due to the admission of Adams, the DHB follows the provision of the Procurement Act in the conduct of its procurement transactions. Therefore, the contract awarded in the sum of 148 million was a clear breach of section 17.1 of the Procurement Act. Now you heart lovers and maniacs of political love for the AFC or the APNO, you hear what it's saying? And that due to the admission of Adams, the DHBC follows the provisions of the Procurement Act in the conduct of its procurement transactions. Therefore, the contract awarded in the sum of 148 million was a clear breach of Section 17 of the Procurement Act. A clear breach, breaking the rule of law, divine friends and family, brothers and sisters around the world. Section 17, subsection 1 of the Procurement Act states that MPTAB is responsible for exercising jurisdiction over tenders which exceed the amounts prescribed in procurement regulations. The regulations state that for the MPI consulting projects that the cost in excess of 5 million Guyana dollars must be administered by the MPTAB, the PPP, C, the PPC, Public Procurement Commission, not the PPPC, ladies and gentlemen, PPC, Public Procurement Corporation. Further, Section 54 of the Act states that Cabinet shall have the right to review all procurements, the value of which exceeds $15 million. The Cabinet shall conduct its review on the basis of a streamlined tender evaluation report to be adopted by the authority mentioned in uh, section 17.2. You see, I'm giving you, uh, it's taking some time, but I'm giving you some direct points and quotes so you will know that this is the reality. In this particular procurement, since there is no evidence that the authority, the NPTAB prepared the report, no evidence that the authority, the authority, ladies and gentlemen, highlighted here in the article, which is the National Procurement Tender Administration Board prepared the report. The submission by the Minister of Public Infrastructure directly to Cabinet was in breach of the Procurement Act. The Procurement Act and regulations make no provision for the Minister of Public Infrastructure to submit a procurement request directly to Cabinet for approval and award of a contract, the PPC reported. During budget debates in 20 in December 2018, while in opposition, Minister Wanagil had called on Patterson to explain how it was accounted that a total of 100 of 148 million was paid to Livense CSO Engineering Contracting Company for the study. But figures show, listen very carefully, ladies and gentlemen, so more money. It's not just the 148 million, it's another 100 million was added for the boy's pocket, plus the commission and bonuses of which is known to be 10% of these organizations that they share to clandestine oper operatives in government. It shows the figure 227 million was paid over by Damara Harbor Bridge for the job. Ajil had claimed in 2017 the asphalt plant of the Damara Harbor Bridge paid 153 million, 250,000, 385 dollars on the feasibility study. And in January 2018, an additional $14,728,000 million and February $59,340,000 was spent on the project. Ladies and gentlemen, here is where the thieving, so the company that they negotiated with also need to be charged. And maybe they can be charged in the United States and in Holland or whichever country they may is the mother country for such things. We see the developed countries, including Europe, do these things to the dishonest companies.
I'm going back to the article, ladies and gentlemen, friends and families. A journal claimed that in 2017, the asphalt plant of Demerara Harbor paid $153 million $250,385 on the feasibility study. And in January 2018, an additional 14 million seven hundred twenty-eight thousand, and in February, 59,000. I gave you that, but I'm repeating for emphasis. In June 2019, the Guyana Police floor clear partisan of wrongdoing, stating that based on legal advice, there was no misuse of funds. There is no evidence that a criminal offense had been committed, and there is no evidence of any collusion between Arimo slash Levenso CSO and the personnel from the Ministry of Public Infrastructure. But remember, that is the time that the APNO AFC cabinet was in power. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. And Patterson was. And they had a certain power of the police force at that time because we saw how certain elements within the police force try to force situations, including, sadly, embarrassingly putting my guards out of the compound of the Arthur Chung Civic Center so we could not see any skullduggery they had intended to perform. So the police at that time was very questionable. Now we have a proper crime chief. Now we have a proper commissioner of police and others set in place. And so they obviously interfered with the police investigations. And this is my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. Patterson expected, is expected to appear in court on Monday to face a charge of attempting to defraud the Demerara Harbor Bridge in excess of $100 million. I challenge personally, Mr. Patterson, I will pay for you to face a polygraph machine. And if you agree to that, that will show Guyana and the world after questioning mm -hmm. that you were not involved in the skullduggery of Tivoli, Mr. Patterson, Mr. Opposition Leader, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ramjatan, Mr. Ramjatan, the Russian kidnappers and maybe murderers. If I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, if Ramjatan cannot produce the evidence and speak the truth, he need to be hauled before a commission to see whether he kidnapped or sold those Russians into slavery or murdered them. We need a murder probe into Mr. Ramjatan, who is also defending his friend and his brother. And we know how cheese normally split amongst rats. We know rats love cheese and rats sit down in a community and they massacre cheese. Friends and families, back to the article. Getting gifting expensive stuff, friends and families, ladies and gentlemen. Meanwhile, the Guyana Police Force has been called in to investigate the circumstances surrounding government agencies gifting expensive items to the former ministers of public infrastructure, David Pasterson, and a beautiful young lady that I appreciate of expecting that she would fall, for I thought she was a wonderful professional in the course of development in the philosophy of the AFC, which became one of the worst called Duggars of Tivoli in the nation and in the Caribbean as I have ever seen. Back to the article. This was confirmed by Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Deodat Inder, on Thursday, who said that neither of the two ministers has indicated their intention to repay the state for the exorbitant gifts. Well, we heard that the general manager of the DHB is repaying, but he still needs to be charged, for he allowed it to happen. He needs to have a charge based on ethics. This was confirmed by minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Devdat Indor, on Thursday, who said that neither of the two ministers has indicated their intention to repay the state for the exorbitant gifts. They have been defending themselves Indar posited, and don't make joke with Mr. Indar, another financial powerhouse in this nation. The state for the exorbitant gifts, they have been defending themselves in Indar posited. According to 2016 records, the Maritime Administration Department, Marad, had purchased the birthday gift for Patterson valued $60,000. Further in 2018, the same agency purchased a $384,700 bracelet for Patterson from King's Jewelry World. Patterson had initially denied receiving the gifts, saying that the reports were crafted in an effort to tarnish his reputation. What a reputation. What reputation. I think if, he's, if he has any reputation, it is all good, fettered away. 
by gluttony for skullduggery and thievery. Back to the article. With documentations being exposed, Patterson later admitted to receiving the gifts, but said that he was not aware that he the acceptance of the expensive gifts was in breach of regulations. He was not aware. When criminals go before judge and magistrates, they always say, I can't remember. And uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse. You should know these are beyond normal things like a lunch or a lunch or a dinner for staff or something like that. I remember when Clement Rohi had an event, a birthday party, not an event. This, all of us of the commission, the National Commission of Law and Order, we came together, gave him a gift, and we gave him and we bought lunch. And he was moved. Not like what we see here with the APNU AFC ministers, masters of skullduggery and thievery. Documents from May 2020 showed that Marad went on to approve a majestic sum of $704,292 towards the purchase of a birthday gifts, friends and families. Unlike the previous years, the 2020 records did not specify that the purchase was for Patterson birthday gift. You see, it didn't show it was for that. So there was definite skullduggery. The then Minister of Public Infrastructure also received gifts from the Transport and Harbors Department, the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority, and the Demerara Harbor Bridge Corporation. The Junior Minister of Public Infrastructure, Annette Ferguson, was not left out as she received uh, uh, items valued at 1.4 million from agencies under the ministry, which included master beds, queen-sized beds refrigerator, household furniture. However, these were classified as donations. Donations, not to charity, but a big shot within the APNU EFC. A spreadsheet from the DHBC showed that in excess of six million in donations were given to the Public Infrastructure Ministry between June 2015 and July 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, brothers and sisters, uh, bask on that. And think for a moment uh, that your taxpayer dollars, the wealth of your nation of a poor country, at that time nothing was coming in, and they were fettering your money as if it was rats chewing and mascaring cheese. Friends and family, your friends and your brother, me, Haji Dr. Ocean can in the raw. RK is going to free media saying thank you. And farewell, friends. Oh, friends.